it seems to be locked up now. Everybody's streaming live on Facebook right now. <laughs> there we go. Okay. 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 Hi. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so welcome back. We've had a two week hiatus. Yeah. I know. How was your two weeks? It was great. Well, um, of course, the first Monday was Memorial Day, and that was really nice, quiet. We were we were invited out for lunch with with friends, so that was very fun. Where'd you go? Uh, no, no, no. They they had us over to their house. They cooked. Oh wow! I know, right? It's like the pandemic is over. Was that in? <laughs> Chicago or was that up in no no yeah in Chicago we were we stayed in town for the for the holiday but then the following week we we went up to Door County and I'm losing I'm losing track of the weeks I know right <laughs> I can't believe that was that long ago I know right it, well that, oh. that was just last Monday a week ago uh, but uh, you wouldn't know that there was a pandemic in Wisconsin I mean nobody was wearing masks not none of the um, well, some of the servers in the restaurants were, but but in the grocery stores, for instance, um, you know, the merchants and most of the restaurant, I mean, nobody in the restaurants, nobody was wearing masks. Well, if they're vaccinated, though, I don't think well, that they no, right. <laughs> of course, then we reopened here in Chicago on uh, Friday, but I, I was at the grocery store on uh, Saturday morning and it was business as usual. Everybody. I mean, they had a little sign on the door that if you're fully vaccinated, you didn't need to wear your mask. Mm. But um, I walked in and everybody had their masks on. Yeah, I was at Whole Foods earlier to... today, and same thing. Yeah. Right. I mean, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get stink eye, so <laughs> I put my mask on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's still very. It's very confusing. I know, right? I mean, it's kind of like a couple of people were kind of giving me stink eye because I didn't have my my mask on. So I thought, okay, I'll just put my mask on. I don't want to get stink eye. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, so yeah. So I have. I also have though the the fear that be, because I think this of some other people that I see with the mask on, I wonder if. If I put my mask on in those situations, do people then think that I'm an anti-vaxxer and won't? I know it's kind of like hard to know because I won't get a vaccination. I know it's kind of hard to know what what's politically correct now, right? Yeah, mask, yeah. Wearing a mask. I mean, it was it was wearing a mask was kind of almost like a political statement. Yeah. But now it's almost like a political statement in the opposite way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I <laughs> So, because yeah, when I see people now, I'm thinking, okay, are they, it's like, it's an, it's, you know, somebody over 50 or 60, you know, if they're, if they're vaccinated, you know, I don't think much of it when I see a, you know, a 20 year old, because who knows, but, right. but somebody at that point would normally have been vaccinated by now. And I'm like, if, and so are they wearing the mask because they're still concerned about it, or are they wearing the mask because they don't want to get a vaccination, they don't believe in it. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's hard to know. Yeah. It's hard to know. I don't know. I mean, I guess we're kind of in the we're in the twilight zone here with the yeah. masks and the vaccination. But um, you no, know, I mean the papers have been re reporting pretty routinely that uh, I mean there's still a few people that even if they've been vaccinated, um, and of course they, I don't know if you saw um, Anthony Rizzo, the Cubs player. Um, you know he's a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. And I guess he's come out very um, vocal about not being vaccinated, that he discussed it with his doctor. And maybe he, because he maybe he feels because he's a immunocompromised that it's but I don't know. It seems it seems like it would be. Yeah, I know of a few other people, uh, other people I know of that have uh, health issues that that they're being told that the that the risk of getting it might be you know higher than the risk of not getting it you know i mean getting it meaning the vaccine that that they uh they might do better you know you get it 
Yeah, and also, so you know. What about getting, I mean, if they're immunocompromised, well, well, I don't know, it doesn't, well, what do we know? We're not doctors, but it would seem that if somebody's immunocompromised, the risk of getting COVID would be really frightening. And yeah. Um, somebody like Anthony Rizzo, that's, you know, and, and I guess the Cubs are one of the teams where they don't have 85% vaccination. So that means they don't have herd immunity, et cetera, right? Yeah, some of the ones I've heard of, the physical issues they have, they're more likely to weather the, the virus than they are to weather whatever effects they might get from the vaccine because of whatever yeah. the issues. And then other, like uh, my good friends, uh, like Benoit, you know, my friend Benoit, his, his father in France, well, you know, France, they don't still don't have the vaccines yet. Oh, Lord. Uh, so they're, they're basically completely unvaccinated, but his father is very ill and is, uh, has kidney disease and has been in the hospital in and out, but they, they won't give him the vaccine when it gets there uh, because of his fiscal issues. But they said he's, because he's uh, basically would be quarantining with a very small group because he's ill anyway, that he's unlikely to get the, the virus, you know, anyway, uh, you know, once everybody's vaccinated or whatever, once they get the vaccines, that it's it's unlikely like he'll be exposed to it because he's not out and about. He'll be homebound, um, getting dialysis at home, you know, et cetera. So um, that there, he's not likely to get it, you know, the, the, the body actually, can't handle it. Right, you know. well, actually I had a call from, from a friend um, Saturday evening, um, they, her, her 90 year old father, they took out of an assisted living facility back last year, specifically because of COVID and brought him home, but he had caretakers. Uh, but one of the caretakers came down with COVID. He got COVID from the caretaker and didn't survive it. He just died in January. I think that's what happened to most of the people that were in the nursing homes and other health facilities. Well, I mean, I mean, but they took him out of the nursing home specifically. Well, he wasn't in a nursing home. He was like, had a little, you know, an assisted living facility. Um, he had his own little apartment and they brought him home specifically to avoid that. But he had caretakers. Yeah, it's not really any different if, because yeah, the people in the nursing homes are getting it from the caretakers. They're not getting it from each other. Right. And so uh, I guess if you still have, or, you know, have people taking care of you that are exposed you know it doesn't really matter where you are then. yeah well and apparently it wasn't even one of the regulars it was one of the caretakers that was subbing in or something i don't know i mean yeah so well, i think she, i missed it to you bringing it back to real estate I it was <laughs> let's bring it back to real estate so what's going on in the market what do you see going on in the market oh, I, I don't want to it. <laughs> what who wants to talk about the market? I was <laughs> relating the COVID situation to it. Oh, oh, to the real estate. Yes, to real estate. Uh, yes, yes. But it's interesting, even in even in our specific industry, it runs the gamut of like where things are at. I mean, we can go do showings now, you know, without masks and no, and it seems like, you know, nothing has ever happened. And then, like I mentioned, I went to that one listing and not only were we wearing masks, we all individually had to sign the document in person. You know, each person there had to fill out the, a separate form, you know, uh, yeah, visiting, a vacant, visiting a vacant property, you know, a vacant you know property. even lived there. Yeah. So it's just interesting how, you know, how different it can be. You know, well, from, uh, yeah, it, obviously it's an individual choice and yeah. People are still very nervous, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I what I'm finding is that I think most people are ready to, to forget about the masks. Yeah. Um, I, I I've been working with a couple of different buyers. All of us are fully vaccinated, and um, we're you know we've been doing like we were before the pandemic. We've been um, not wearing masks. I had an inspection this morning. 
um, it was just me, the buyer, and, and the home inspector. All of us were vaccinated, so none of us wore masks. Um, which yeah, was I went to show that 1320 in our state, um, mm -hmm. that uh, co-op on State Parkway this morning, mm -hmm. and um, that's one of the buildings that has been most shut down of anything that I've worked on during we, for most of last year. Right after we listed it, we couldn't show it for most of last year because they weren't even allowing people in the building. There were, uh, fortunately, my clients uh, only have it as an in town. They don't really live in the state, and uh, but uh, there were several uh, owners that had been moved out of the property to to have work done on it on their properties, and they had to live in hotels for months because they couldn't come back. They weren't. The places were torn apart and they weren't even allowing contractors. They weren't even allowing cleaning people in the building. Well, how can they, how can they do that? I mean, how can, you know, they, they, so wait not, a minute. So you're saying that before the pandemic, they had, they were going to rehab the, the units. The units were torn apart. Right. So that you couldn't live in them. Right. And then, and then we locked down and the building wouldn't allow the contractors in to finish. Wouldn't allow anybody in. No realtors, no photographers, no contractors, no cleaning people, nobody. I mean, and you got to understand it's, I mean, it's, I, I hate to equate it to like a nursing home or something, but it's an elderly population that live in that and other buildings like that in the Gold Coast. And they have those two little vintage elevators that are like four by <laughs> four on right, the inside. Right. I mean, it's a beautiful building, but um, it's a different, you know, it's a different population. And, and, uh, I think they're also of the ilk that's like, you know, we're shutting this thing down, you know? Yeah. Um, and I guess, uh, if, I guess if the people in the building, that's what they wanted, I guess, obviously, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so when I went there this morning, like I said, I've kind of gotten used to not worrying about it now, but when I got to the building, I got out of the car and I was headed to the showing. I thought, uh, I better go get my mask. And, uh, so I went and got the mask and sure enough, the doorman came to open the door for me and he didn't have a mask on. I was like, oh, wow. So but it, it didn't even really think about it. So I was getting on the elevator after he gave me the keys and uh, I hollered back to him. I said, are we maskless now? And he said, yeah, yeah, no problem. So I was like, wow. wow. So that's, that's one of the places it's well, gone our building is one I, extreme I mean, to I'm, the other. Yeah, I'm, you know, because I live over in the condo on Sheridan Road and um I think everybody, well, we haven't gotten any word from the management company that we don't have to wear masks and the doorman and the, gen, you know, the building engineer guys, uh, they've all been wearing their masks. So we're still mm -hmm. wearing masks here, but um, we've only allowed, I mean, we have regular sized and I know the, I think one of the, I think Blair said it's like they're waiting for the building owners and managers association, BOMA. Yeah. To, to make their, to lift their suggested, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, whatever criteria. Yeah, right, right, right. Like yeah, more maybe, maybe that's what they're waiting for. I don't know. But um, now I, I've got my my condo down in on East End for sale, which was a co-op building, like your 1320 state, uh, that 5,000 East End. Um, and it has a tiny little elevator. It's like, you're talking about it's the 1927 Art Deco building. With yeah, the little... that's a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. And uh, yeah, I, well, now it's been a week since I've been down there, but um, I don't think they allow more than one or two. You know, except for a family group on the elevators, I wouldn't get an. I, if there was somebody in the elevator, I wouldn't get them because it's literally like a. I mean, four people would be crammed in there. Yeah, of course, those buildings are, uh, you know, very low occupancy anyway. They're big units and very few people actually live there full time. And mm -hmm. so I'm hardly, even before COVID, I was hardly ever, you know, waiting for the elevator with somebody else or somebody else on the elevator. Right, anyway. right, right, right. There's, right. there's well, one that, you know, yeah. one elevator only goes to two, two units, you know, per floor. Right. That's right. Well, actually, that's the same story with East End, too. It's, it's. Yeah. The, the one elevator only goes to yeah there's only two units on a floor and then 
the other tier is another elevator, but yeah, most of those the service elevators perfect. too. If you're taking the dogs down, go out the service elevator. They don't go down the front elevator, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, most of those buildings are built that way, which is kind of nice, you know, not having that kind of dormitory style hallway. You know, right. you I agree. Right. Actually, the unit across the hall from ours just came on the market. I saw uh, this oh, morning. Somebody buying them. them. I know mine is 16D, and we're priced at 235. We're two bedroom, two bath, about eight, uh, about 1600 square feet. The unit across the hall, 16C, as in Charlie just came on at 350. So over like 100 and, you know, 15,000 more. It's two bedrooms, two and a half baths, but it's it's a bigger unit. It's 2,200 square feet. So quite yeah. a bit bigger, but doesn't yeah. have views. We have better views. <laughs> I've got the same situation. I've got 7D and 7C came on the market but we're like almost 3,000 square feet each. So it would, re it would really be- You might allow. Yeah, that'd be really combine nice. those. But you imagine 6,000 square feet on one floor, you know, with one, you know, basically a private elevator vestibule that only went to your unit. Right. So yeah, cool. I guess, you, but you'd have to do something with the, um, I guess you'd have to knock, would you knock out the common wall between the living rooms? and have one gargantuan living room? I don't know. Probably. I mean, if you've got 6,000 square feet, you've got to have a giant living room. Yeah. I mean, they've got big living rooms anyway, but yeah, you probably want to do a really, really So by, by listing over on, uh, over on Leland, over in Lincoln Square, um, he, um, he um, we had a showing there on Saturday and the neighborhood had their neighborhood a yard sale and and that that built that property is tenant occupied and uh they forgot of course that i was coming and they had a big dinner party friday night with 10 people oh, wow. <laughs> everybody was like, hello i know right exactly well <laughs> first of all they had this huge dinner party with 10 people and then they had the yard sale that started at 9 a.m you know saturday morning and i here i am at there at two o'clock on saturday and they're selling i actually did get a little teapot from them a very cute <laughs> teapot <laughs> well i kind of felt like you know i can't you need to buy so something not buy something right <laughs> I'm actually going to send it to my girlfriend in England because she she's a tea Nazi and uh, she she doesn't drink tea made with tea bags. It has to be loose leaf and blah, blah, blah. She has a whole ritual about well, it's probably tea. the wrong teapot then. No, no, it, it's uh, it's like a brown. You know what a brown Betty is, right? Well, this, uh, no, instead of a brown Betty, this is a gold Betty. <laughs> See, it's all wrong. <laughs> Anyway, it's very cute. When I looked at it, I thought it almost looked like some of that depression wear, that fiesta wear, you know. Oh, that wow. stuff. But anyway, it's not. It's just a. It's just a gold teapot, not gold, but like banana yellow, that color. So, anyway, she's getting that for her birthday, but don't tell her that. <laughs> it's a surprise. Anyway, hopefully she's not listening. She won't know. Anyway. Um, yeah, so he he's a Facebook said, person. What? He a Facebook person? Yeah, well, she she could get on Facebook. Yeah, she if she if she actually sits and listens to this, she'll hear it. But anyway, I don't think she will. But um, who knows? Anyway, she'll find out. It's a test. Uh, right, it's a test. Um, but anyway, so they had this dinner party, and and uh, I was waiting for the other agent to show up with their buyer, and I got to talking to him, and and uh, he's like, yeah, he said I cut off the wine about. 11 o'clock or so and nobody wanted to leave he said it was one o'clock before we got people out of here <laughs> i'm like one o'clock in the morning <laughs> i would have just shut the lights off and gone to bed and said bye <laughs> well it's kind of funny because i'm seeing both both ends of the uh the post-pandemic um like socialization I'm seeing people really wanting to get out and excited to be with everybody right. but also i'm seeing that people have are not used to it now right and not used to staying up late right and so i i've been in a few situations where people are like it's great to see you now it's time to go to bed yeah. <laughs> that's um, right, right. well i kind of wonder if, i mean i kind of wonder if there's not going to be more 
dinner parties because we've all gotten used to cooking again. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, before the pandemic, if you got together with friends, you went out to a restaurant. Well, I, I should maybe speak for myself. I don't know. But generally speaking, we'd go out to a restaurant and you'd sit for a couple hours. But with the pandemic, it's like we're all used to cooking. So um, it's a lot more fun. And we did this during the Great Recession, actually. I, we got into the habit of doing dinner parties just because it was um, cheaper and easier, but it's also a lot more fun. Well, I don't know, easier, cheaper, definitely cheaper. <laughs> we did yeah. it cheaper. Yeah, it's not really easier, you're right. It's not easier, no, it's more work, but it's but it's a lot more fun and you don't feel like after two hours you have to go and you know, you could, but that, the problem is of course it gets to be midnight and people don't get the hint that it's time to go home now. <laughs> They need to put an end time on your invitations now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Anyway, but uh, or do like they do at the bars and turn all the lights up really, really bright. Oh, yeah, there we go. Rather than turn the lights off, just turn them all on, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I said, I said to the tenant, I said, I imagine everybody's just so excited to to be out and socializing. They're so deprived of socialization. He says, Yeah, he says exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. Right. So. Mm. Are you are you hosting any dinner parties, you guys? Not really. I mean, mostly again because we're kind of up here. We actually talked about doing something this weekend. Uh, one of our good friends, Dr. Jeff, has his his birthday is tomorrow, so we talked about inviting him up for the birthday. But but we've got people coming into town that we got to be with in, into the city. Friday night and possibly Saturday night. So it's like, it doesn't, we got to be in the city of parts of it anyway. So uh, it really makes sense to try to do something up at the house. Well, I'm going to, you know, I've been thinking I should uh, plan a client, uh, client event, but um, I actually just got um, a save the date reminder because, you know, I'm on the advisory board at the Real Estate Institute at Roosevelt and they're doing their gala this year rather than a sit down dinner they're doing just an uh, open bar and heavy hors d'oeuvres networking event that's going to be at the old post office you know down oh, nice. yeah. right i mean it's i don't know if you've seen that but it's really a, we were there um one of the board members is um, um was a duke was it developed by duke Anyway, um, so one of the board members was on the, it works at the company that rehabbed that space. So our alumni chapter group um, did a tour over there a couple of years ago while it was still under construction. And it is just a spectacular space. So that's, yeah. that's where they're gonna be holding the, uh, the event this year. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just do that as a client event. I mean, uh, how could I? How could I possibly do better than that, right? <laughs> I don't know. Are you, are you starting your cocktail club again? Or what, did you do that? Yeah, I think I started in July. I talked about this month, but there was just too much going on, and it was still kind of everybody figuring it out. So, I, um, am I going to get invited? Of course. <laughs> Good, because I'll be there. <laughs> I found so, out that, that. Go ahead. I would say, tell me what you mean by a uh, client event. Are you combining it or are you talking about doing a client event at that space? No, no, no. I'm, I mean, combining it, just inviting, oh. inviting my clients to it in lieu of. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And, right? Wouldn't, I mean, it kind of kills two birds with one stone. It gets my clients together and invites them to a nice event yeah. and, uh, and supports the, the, because the money that they raise from that supports the scholarship programs and, and all that stuff that the university uh, posts. And they've started oh. an undergrad program. Um, they were only, it's actually only, this was actually their second year, the 20, the 2020, 2021 school year was their second year of having an undergrad program. And um, they, they got something like, um, they had like, well, anyway, they've got, it's really starting to take off because it was always strictly just a grad program. So yeah. they've started, uh, they've started um, doing undergrad and they're offering scholarships for the undergrads and, and all that people that are interested. And, and the hope would be that um, right now the undergrads are actually taking the same courses 
as the grads. It's the same coursework. So the hope would be that once, if that as an undergrad, if you grad, if you graduate with a master's in, with a bachelor's in, in real estate, that you're ready to rock and roll in the real estate industry. Now, mind you, this is not brokerage. This is everything else, but like yeah. property management and development and all that stuff. So, the big stuff. What? The big stuff. Right, the big stuff, the commer more commercial than, than residential, but. Um, so this yeah. would be almost, uh, you, you combining this with your client as a client event would be like the equivalent of like buying tables at a, you know, at a uh, fundraiser. Right, exactly, exactly. And since they're, not doing, since they're not doing a sit down dinner, the tickets are a little, are, are, are less expensive and, um, um, and it'll be more of a networking event, open bar and heavy hors d'oeuvres and- More fun for your clients anyway. I think it'd be more fun, yeah, yeah, so. Anyway, so I'm kind of excited about that. So uh, maybe I'll do that because then I don't have to worry about turnout and whether it's a, a successful event or not. And <laughs> all those things that you worry about when you- I think that's a really good idea, actually. I really do. Yeah? yeah. Yeah, and in yeah. the end, and at the end of the day, it's probably not going to be any more expensive, really, to just buy yeah. tickets, right? Yeah. yeah, and and it's the uh, and all the the planning and everything is taken care of, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, you just show up. Yeah. Um, yeah right. Maybe you can do something special for your people that come or whatever, you know, have something that they wear or something like that or whatever, that might you know. Be fun. Yeah, that might be kind of fun, like like or a those... T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm, <laughs> no, I don't think so. But anyway, yeah, but that's a good idea, actually. I have to think about something like that. Maybe a pen. Maybe an impact pen. pen. A what? I meant like a put on pen, like a oh, MNAC. pen. Oh, by the way, speaking of pins. Pen, not a pen. Today is a, what? A pen, not a pen. A pin, like my, like my flag day. Is flag, flag day. day. Today is flag day, so I'm wearing my I know, flag because day. it said so on the highway on the way into the city this morning. Oh, okay. Well, on happy big, flag day. Everybody the, just uh, our flag. The, uh, oh, yeah, no, I know. The, the, the big the, boards, the electronic boards or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of who it is. Uh, Illinois Department of... Uh, yeah, Illinois Department of Transportation. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I dot, yeah. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Well, so I think this happy hour thing, we're, we're, we're sitting here drinking soda and water. When, what are you drinking? You're not drinking. Got my yerba mate. Oh, all right. Well, so much for my happy afternoon, hour. afternoon treat. I, I actually found out that when I had my office, one of the agents that used to work for me, he got, he's, all, all those agents that used to work for me, this is back in the early 2000s. And of course the, the, the great recession happened and none of those people are in real estate anymore. Um, but one of them is actually a bartender. I just found out, I, I think I knew this, but somehow I didn't connect the dots, but he's a bartender over um, in uh, Logan Square. It's called um, Billy Sundays. Oh yeah. He's yeah, he's one of their bartenders there. So and they it looks like they have quite a craft cocktail program. Yeah, I think that's what it's about. Yeah. Uh, do you have you been there? Do you know about Billy Sunday? I know about it. I don't think I've been though, but I know of it. Yeah. So I think we're for a little while. I think we're going to have to mount an expedition. I have to find out when Patrick will be there, and we'll have to mount an expedition and go go check out Billy Sunday. Paul be jealous. No, Carl. No, actually, Carl. Uh, Carl's one of Ca Carl's cocktails is on their cocktail menu now. He says oh, that's cool. it's actually selling really well. It's a. Um, you mean at? At at Evac. Evac. Yeah. Okay. At Evac. Not at Billy Sundays. No, no, Carl's at Evac. At, well, I know, but it sounded like you meant it was on the. Uh, oh no no no. Billy Sundays. <laughs> no 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 no. We're gonna grab up Carl and go to Billy Sunday and check and see Patrick. <laughs> who used to be in real estate he has a, he has his uh, bachelor's degree in philosophy from northwestern university so obviously his martin <laughs> you know and it's kind of like i tell people at, at at the real estate institute i have a degree in music what do you do with a degree in music 
get into <laughs> real estate or become a bartender, I guess. <laughs> no, I think the philosophy slash bartender makes more sense. Well, that's true because you sit behind the bar and you philosophize. philosophize. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so no, yeah, Carl has a, uh, I don't know what they call it. I can't remember what he calls it. They give, you know, they always give it some clever name. Did you say who Carl is? No, I didn't. Car Carl is my, my son, the bartender at Evec in River North, about two blocks from where Wes lives. Which used to be? Uh, it used to be P uh, Pacific Standard Time, PST. And uh, they uh, they closed down and re reopened as um, rebranded themselves as Evec. There's an Evec over. Is that in Fulton Market? Is that where the other Evec is? Do you know? Uh, pretty close. Or, it was or Randolph it was Street. Randolph, yeah. Maybe on Randolph Street. Anyway, it's it's a one-off hospitality. Is it's a hospital. Same ownership. Yeah. What? Same ownership. Same ownership, right, right, right. It's one-off hospitality. They actually owned uh, own um, the Violet Hour over at, in Bucktown and in, in Wicker Park, over on North and Damon, over there. The number one cocktail bar in all of North America, according to Condé Nast. Yeah, and uh, but anyway, so Carl's a bartender there, and um, he, Carl has a degree in computer science from Northwestern. And he was a computer geek for a while and got burnt out on, on the whole thing and decided he wanted to pursue his passion and become a bartender. So here he is. <laughs> so I think a lot of bartenders are really well-educated, bright guys. That's what I think. <laughs> but anyway, so his cocktail is a, like a grapefruit gimlet. Um, sounds really good, actually. He was telling me about it yesterday. I know he's a gin yeah. fan. Y yes, it is a gin. Yes, it is gin. But not I'm not sure it could be made with vodka for those who insist on not drinking gin. But they, <laughs> <laughs> but he made it's made with a Dar Darjeeling gin. With uh, it comes from India. It's made with Darjeeling, like a tea. tea? Infused, huh? It's a tea. Yeah, the Darjeeling tea infused gin. So it sounds really interesting and, and grapefruit uh, juice and they have a, uh, a grapefruit vanilla cordial that they make in house. Yeah. Oh yeah, my, my beatnik in Tulsa was really good. They, yeah, beatnik they house, and what? Yeah, they house infused vodka with beets. Oh. And it had a lemon, what was in it? had a few other things in it but it was really yeah it was really good hmm, that does sound just, good. just a little you know it was pink and it had just a little bit of the beet flavor but not too much yeah mm -hmm. that was good i've been on whiskey sours lately I, i've been on a whiskey sour kick and i found yeah. out you can use um um the water the the liquid from uh, garbanzo beans you know like canned garbanzo beans aquafaba, aquafaba. you use mm -hmm. that but you have to be careful how much you use because it will impart kind of a bean flavor to the cocktail. But in, but were you using it instead of an egg white? Instead of an egg white, right? Aquafaba, and you put like maybe a half a tablespoon in a in a um, in a um, for a drink for one drink. Yeah. And you put it in the shaker and you shake it and it gets all nice and foamy and kind of gives you that that that. Um, that what am I trying to say that fluffiness of, the fluffiness yeah well I was going to say gooiness actually the kind of the sticky oh, yeah. kind of gives it the thicker gelatinous. texture. yeah gelatinous. gelatinous that's the word I want gelatinous texture that that you get yeah. in a sour yeah, you know you can you can use it in place of eggs for cooking too right uh, baking right. that it works really well I've replaced eggs and like especially at in uh, like cornbread and stuff I found that like it actually even worked better um oh really so, hmm. yeah really it's really good yeah yeah but don't overdo the aquafaba but just maybe a half a tablespoon is all yeah. you need because otherwise you'll get a bean flavor to your cocktail and you don't yeah. want that <laughs> and, the, and the aquafaba is very from you know bean to from like brand to brand of, of beans of chickpeas oh. so you can find the ones that work the best for you that way too 
both both in flavor and consistency they they vary oh well that sounds that sounds like a good uh, summer uh, project <laughs> To find the perfect whiskey sour garbanzo bean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, well, on that note, we're 30 minutes into our little happy hour thing. I think maybe I will go make me a whiskey sour now that we've been talking about it. And uh, and we'll, we'll hopefully, I don't know, maybe we ought to continue to do this at four o'clock. We kind of like happy hour, don't we? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, I'd be open to discussing that. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out and we'll post it on Facebook and uh, let you know, but you don't always believe everything you see or read because <laughs> what happened this morning was we both got held up on appointments. So as, as anything in real estate, things tend to have to be fluid. Things have to yeah. be a little flexible, but uh, <laughs> we do the best we can. <laughs> Everybody always asks me like, what's your schedule this week? And I'm like, I I don't know what it is this afternoon. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly, week. right? Well, yeah, I know. And then you make plans. And so this inspection that I had this morning, I thought, oh, well, the listing agent will be there. So if I have to leave at 1130, no problema. Well, she couldn't be there. So, yeah, what am I going to oh, do? Well. But uh, uh, the best laid plans. But um, I'm finding that that, that Calendly, I have that Calendly um, uh, app that I use in my signature. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to use that pretty successfully with people. It's like, you know what, just go to my Calendly link, figure out when what your schedule looks like. You can see my schedule and you know, let's just book something. And it, it works out really well, actually. Good. One of the benefits of the pandemic. Yeah. So, <laughs> of which there will be many. We, we will have many, including Zoom calls, right? Yeah, including this. Including Zoom calls. So, all right, good. Well, everybody have a good night. Enjoy your happy hour. And uh, we'll see you next week sometime, either noon or maybe at four or something. But we'll let you know. Perfect. Bye. For now. Bye. <laughs>